Hello everyone, Fernay Munoz with Wireless LAN Professionals. Cambium XV38. Let's talk a little bit about it. Cambium XV38. That's a Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax8x8x8 by 8 by 8 access point from Cambium Networks. This video is in no way sponsored by Cambium. Neither it is a comprehensive set of instructions on how to configure properly. This is just to share with you my first impression. The device can be configured multiple uh, ways. Uh, you can manage it with XMS Cloud or with the CN Maestro, which is the uh, cloud management for uh, Cambium Networks. And uh, it can also be uh, managed as a standalone device. This is the approach I'm going to take. By default, it is set on the uh, 192.168.0 network with 24-bit mask. I'm going to join it to my local network, which is 192.168.128. Uh, using this application, LandScan Pro, I'm going to scan the network. The last four of the MAC address of this device is DC0C, so it obtained that 137. So now let's go over to my browser. I will use that IP address, 137, and the default username and password is just admin admin, very simple. And once I go in, the dashboard provides plenty of information. If I have any clients connected, uh, what channels am I using on 2.4 and 5 gig? I don't have M gig ports in my network. I only have 1 gig, so it is getting 1 gigabit connection. And it's showing that both radios 2.4 and 5 are up and running. Here on the access point info, we have you know, model, software, MAC address, uh, the host name, uptime, some resources and yes this is a three radio dual band uh, this guy has a 2.4 radio and software defined radios in 5 gig right now i only have one radio in 5 gig and i'm using all 8 by 8 by 8 on it if i want to split that into two radios i'll have two radios that are four by four uh, also this type of ap is rest of the world so i can just set up on any regulatory domain here on the right the radio info will give me uh, stats on my 2.4 like how many wlans i have clients if i have any connected what channel they're operating channel widths and power levels this has been uh, great because we set up some SSIDs for testing and we manually came and set up the uh, power levels. Let's see how we can go through and look at all of these settings. Starting with the monitor tab here on the left, we have the system. The system is a, a breakdown of what we looked on the dashboard. Just a little bit about the uh, AP itself. Looking at the radio, the radio one is in 2.4. It tells me that yes, it is enabled. Uh, channel is set to auto 20 megahertz wide and 10 dBm power. Uh, it also shows me the antenna gain. My second radio is enabled. Uh, the channel is automatic as well. And I made it 20 megahertz wide channel and I'm transmitting 20, uh, 16 dBm. On the WLAN tab, it gives me information about my SSIDs. I have one in 2.4, that's my WLAN 1. My WLAN 2 is an SSID I created in 5 gig, and this is some summary of, the, of that SSID. I also created a third one just for uh, testing. Looking at the network, it gives me information about the IP address obtained on my default VLAN and information on my uh, interfaces. Also, if I were to have some uh, other routing or e Ethernet ports configured, that information will show up in here. The DHCP server I have not enabled on this guy, so it doesn't show anything. On the services, it's a summary uh, I'll show you under configure, which is our following tab, each one of these options. This Remember, the monitor is to look at the configurations on each one of those. Let's now look at the configure part. If we start with configure system, here is where I would set the name of the access point, location and contact information and country code. This is the place where I would choose what regulatory domain this guy will be operating at. Also, if it's an indoor and outdoor placement. And here is the place where you can split this 5 gig 8 by 8 by 8 into two four by four radios so to apply this i would have to restart the uh, the device i'm not going to do that but here it specifies that it will just split them uh, one of the radios will be in uni 2c and uni 3 and the other one will be in uni 1 and uni 2a to prevent them from being too close to each other 
I am going to disable that guy. Uh, LEDs, if I want them on, uh, under the management, here is where I will set up you know, SSH parameters and what ports I want to use for management and uh, radios. Also, SNMP information and NTP servers will be set up in here. Another uh, little bit of information, this video is not to show you how to configure every little one of the options here, just to give you an impression and a little quick uh, overview of the uh, interface. Under radio, notice I'm still under configure and here I have radio one and the settings under this basic tab will affect my 2.4 radio. Yes, I have this radio enabled, channel is automatic, but notice down here where it says candidate channels, I specified 1, 6, and 11. So I let it to automatically assign a channel, but out of these three. I don't want it to land. This is to prevent this from landing the AP in channel 3 or 5 or 9 or 10. So I force it into 1, 6, and 11. The channel width, I force it to 20 megahertz wide channel, and I manually specify 10 dBm as my power level. Beacon interval, that's default. And Airtime fairness, I have that uh, disabled, but here is the place where you would set that up. Also, what phi mode you want. You could have B or B, G or G, N or all kind of combination, but I force it to be N only, N with uh, short guard enable, enable. If I want to do some of channel scanning, here's where I would enable that, and also the auto RF. Notice that the auto RF, this is the RRM uh, option, uh, it will change to a different channel based on either interference or on channel utilization. And if you choose by channel utilization, I can set the threshold. And by default, it's set to 25%. So if a channel is 25% utilized or more, then it's gonna try to move to a different channel. And it will try to hold the channel for 120 minutes. Also, under the five gig radio, if I click on the five gig radio, the options are the same, but for the five gig radio. Channels, it will show me what channels. Notice that this guy is on Uni 1 and Uni 3. Perhaps it doesn't have the you know, approval to, for using the other channels. Uh, also, I force the channels to just be 20 megahertz wide with a transmit power of 16 dBm. This is the place where you change that as well as what phi mode you want to use. All the rest of the settings are the same for both. And also there is an enhanced roaming here. This option will disconnect clients that have too weak of a signal kind of like you know helping them or influencing them to go to a different channel under the wlan i have this ssid in 2.4 only let's look at the basic settings of this guy it is enabled meshes off here's the name of the ssid you can just call it whatever you want to call it and i let it on the uh, default vlan if you have more VLANs created, then you can assign it to a separate one. Uh, security. I have uh, open. I have the OSCN, which is for Passpoint. I have WPA2 and WPA3 options. I have it open right now. And notice that I am advertising in 2.4 only. Let's jump down here to uh, the option for band steering. That option is disabled. We don't let uh, our devices decide what band to send clients to. We manually set radius, uh, SSIDs on 2.4 radios only or 5 gig only radios. Uh, also, in here, I will set up the client isolation. Some vendors call these uh, peer to peer communications or client to client communications. So, this is to allow or prevent clients from talking to each other without going through the access point. The uh, option to hide the SSIDs will be here. And also in, under the advanced settings, uh, you can schedule the, uh, enable the unscheduled automatic power save delivery mode. And very important, this has a QBSS uh, load element. This is great because on the beacon, it gets announced giving uh, a report on how busy a channel is given channel utilization and also um, station count. It helps clients make decisions on, you know, is this a good AP for me or not? Here as well, I can set the DTIM interval for this SSID. Uh, there are some more additional information and all of the information here, including if it's gonna be tunnel, if it's gonna be using 0211K or V uh, or R, then will be under the basic settings. Now, all of these settings affect this SSID only. 
also radio server information will be here if it's going to be a, a guest network then you can enable it and provide additional information under this tab uh, usage limit this will be for rate limiting remember that's not recommended uh, but here's where those are in case you come into an engagement that requires you to do so also under the WLAN tab you can also for each SSID you can configure access and you can configure any pass point settings those settings will be here for that SSID if I want to create a new SSID all I have to do is click on add WLAN uh, I have three created so far so my next number will be my WLAN ID 4 and then I create all of the settings that we just went through here's where I will give the SSID if I want to add security on what radios I want to advertise that SSID and so on and so forth let's move now to the network tab the default VLAN is one and my IP settings are set to DHCP if you want to assign a static IP to this access point then here is the place where you would set that IP and mask also if there are IPv6 settings that you want to configure here is the place to do them and on the routing and DNS you can add also additional DNS servers and any other information that you need for this uh, device to be accessible uh, under the routes you can just add more and uh, Ethernet ports remember you have two ports one is an M gig port so it's got one two and five uh, gig and uh, I have a one gig port as well that you can enable and for security, there are some uh, DOS protection stuff like IP spoof and uh, ICMP fragments. There are you know, a little bit of things you can do for security. DHCP, I have not enabled this device as a DHCP server, but if you want to have this device distribute IP addresses, here is where you would create a new pool. Uh, also, for information for tunneling and PPPoE uh, information will be set under the network tab and also if you want to create multiple VLANs and assign uh, SSIDs to different VLANs here is the place under services uh, if you have an LDAP server then here's where you would enter that information uh, speed test uh, I enabled this we're gonna look at this on the troubleshoot section uh, and also if you want to include a, an option 82 here is the place now under operations Here's the place where you would do maintenance, like upgrade the firmware, the software, reboot the device or uh, set it back to factory defaults. Or if you have multiple uh, APs, you can flash the LEDs to identify which ones those are and also import and export the configuration for this device. Under the troubleshoot, that's the last tab here on the left. Uh, you have the Wi-Fi analyzer. I can select the band if I want to start a scan in 2.4. It will get off channel and go and scan on every channel and see what other networks, SSIDs and their MAC addresses are around me. So this will give me some information along with some noise levels. So this will help me a little bit in identifying you know, what channels could I use in this area. I can do the same thing on 5 gig. Uh, of course, this is not going to replace you know a wi-fi explorer from adrian granados or a winfi light from helga keck this is just another cool troubleshooting tool that we have in here as part of the interface also if we look at the spectrum analyzer um, i tried generating some signals with the wi-fi metrics uh, this i could not either on safari or on chrome i couldn't have it show me some relevant information uh, again, this is you know, something that is there. Um, I don't know if there is anything else that I have to do to make it work, but this is not a replacement for my psychic. I'm not going to replace my psychic with this. And this is not why I would buy one of these Cambium uh, 8 by 8 by 8 access points to do spectrum analysis. No, I have the psychic for that. On the speed test, I tried, uh, I have a WLAN Pi and setting up the IP address as my endpoint. 921.28.254 that's the IP address of my uh, WLAN Pi I uh, tried to either upload do an uplink or downlink and I, it just gives me an error so if I wanted to really do some testing I'll figure out how to make this work but that's not a priority for me on this device uh, I do use the uh, ping from here just to make sure I can indeed get to that WLAN Pi and my, my ping was successful the uh, packet capture uh, I did some captures on my WLAN uh, on the first one and it's basic it captures 
packets, but it's not, I don't have an option like to um, export this as a pickup and import it into uh, OmniPeak or Wireshark to analyze. This is kind of another feature that I have there along with the logs. Remember this video is not to show you how to configure just to navigate and show you the different options you have. My first impression with this guy is it was really easy to configure and very, very, extremely easy to navigate. Also, I created an account in Cambium Networks because they have that Cambium Networks management in the cloud and it's free. So I went, created an account, very quick I received an email uh, confirming that yes, I wanted to register. Once I went and created the account, I logged in and here I am. I have access uh, to the interface. This is a, a, a management system that comes to you at no cost, kind of surprising as well. And uh, I can onboard devices from here. I can claim devices. I have not claimed any device yet, but I could claim and manage the Cambium devices from here. So very easy to use, very intuitive as well. Uh, it provides plenty of information in just a single pane. If I were to have multiple devices in multiple locations, I could manage them from here at no extra cost. Sounds too good to be true, huh? Well, we're so used to fees, 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 but this guy seems to not have one. That is it. We did do some testing with this device. We'll be showing those results in different set of videos. And uh, this was just to show you the interface how easy it is to navigate and configure and set up. We will see you again in another video. If you want to learn more about Wi-Fi networks, if you want to be part of the community, come and join us. WLAMPros.com. That's the place. Fernando Muñoz, have a great day.